Hello and welcome to another very special episode of the Sales Ops Demystified podcast. We are joined by Scott Haney, who is currently running revenue operations at a sales tech tool called Chili Piper. Scott, welcome to the show. Yeah, thanks for having me. Now, Scott has he's been on the sales and marketing side as a, a practitioner um, previously, but then has shifted into the ops side and now is responsible, I assume, we'll get into this, for the operations related to sales and marketing for Chili Piper. Um, on top of that, Chili Piper is a tool that, uh, well, well, we'll get Scott to explain in a second, but kind of bridges the two teams as well. So in this episode, I want to dig into um, what Scott feels is, is the best way to optimize these two teams, sales and marketing. So Scott, did, does that sound good for this chat? Yeah, absolutely. So first question, how did, you, like, you were at Marketo in sales, you were you joined Chili Piper in sales. What made you transition over into operations? Yeah. Um, so the way, like, I think I personally got an interest in operations is when I was when I was over at Marketo. Uh, like, we had a huge sales team, and they did like a really really smooth way of operations. So I think it was really cool to be able to see how operations worked at a really large scale organization, um, and. Like as I got experience in sales development over at Marketo, um, I found like a little gap in our process, which is what got me to just, I, I do a ton of research on different tools all the time. So I was always into just getting my hands on things and like learning how they would work in effect, like sales, sales process. Um, so there was a gap in one in our process for a uh, handoff. And I was trying to solve that with a tool and that got me interested in, Doing the research, I ended up stumbling upon Chili Piper. Um, I, I really couldn't even like find a tool to solve like our problem for it. And I had friends who were joining Sales Loft at the time, and so they they introduced me to this tool. And I actually ended up reaching out over to Alina initially, and she initially thought I was prospecting her, which was kind of funny. <laughs> um, so long story short, eventually, a few months later, they had a sales position open. Um, so. I, I didn't even realize they had only been in business since like, I think May of 2016. So I was ended up being the first one to join on over there. So um, joined and doing sales and basically had to build out a lot of stuff from the ground up. Um, so I think that was definitely like what got me really interested in it. And then as we had started adding more sales reps to the team, uh, we need somebody to handle all of the renewals and the existing customer base. So I was like, okay, cool. I'll volunteer for that. Um, ended up jumping into that and that that freed up a little bit more of my time to be able to start doing more operations, um, typically focused very heavily on like the more of the sales development and AE process of it. And then I was able to start building around, okay, how are we going to handle renewals or upsell potential existing business? Um, then we hired on more CS people, more account managers, and then eventually I was able to step back and just do operations among those departments. Um, and I'm also in a, like a cool position just because I, I do operations like literally everything, even security reviews to recruiting <laughs> in addition to it. So I think just being like super process driven is really, really what got me into sales ops. Got it. And so you were, so you transitioned to Chili Piper because you found the tool because you had a need at Marketo, right? Um Yeah. Just for everybody listening, we'll throw like a quick overview of what Chili Piper does. Yeah. So the, like, for example, the, how I got into Chili Piper is, uh, so we, we had a really big spreadsheet when we were distributing meetings from SDR to AE handoff. Um, so I was looking for a way to automate that just because people would send meetings to the wrong rep or people would complain about not getting enough fair distribution of meetings. Uh, so that's essentially the, the problem that we saw was we automate that reps can just book a meeting in two clicks inside of Salesforce or email, or if you're using a sales engagement tool. Um, and then as our product evolved, uh, we have heavily been going to market with our inbound platform. So if you go to somebody's website, fill out a web form, um, we'll present the option to book a meeting or, or start a call if they're qualified. And then it does all the routing and meeting distribution on the back end. Got it. And why move? Like, because you, you, you transition through various different sales roles and then into ops. But why move into ops? Why not just stay in sales? Um, I think the way like I thought about the, why I wanted to move into ops is just because I like having my hands on 
a whole bunch of different processes. And I, I, I probably get a little bit bored just doing the exact same thing over and over and over. I think for me personally, I think it's really fun to get my hands on like literally everything in the business and be able to learn a bunch and absorb a lot of it and be able to figure out what works and what doesn't. Cool. So you, and did I catch that you were the first sales resource at Chili Piper when you joined? Yeah. Cool. And so just so we understand, well, it also seems like your, your role now is more holistic operations. So what, what are the operations kind of structure and resources at Chili Piper at the moment? So you're running revenue operations, but it seems like you're doing more. Yeah. So the, I'd say the departments that I have my hands on is, is a good, it's just about everything. I mean, it's primarily sales and marketing operations and CS operations. There's three ones. Um, but I do help out even from the top of the funnel with just sourcing candidates in if we have open positions that we're hiring for. Um, so I'll do interviews just depending on what position it is that we're interviewing for. Um, and then more towards the end is like when somebody eventually comes on board, they sign on with us. Um, I'll handle uh, some of the finance stuff as well. So fortunately, we just hired a fractional CFO person, which takes a little bit of that way off me. <laughs> um, but I'd say primarily the main focus is around like sales ops, like SDR and AE, um, just freeing up whatever roadblocks that they've got in their process. Got it. So are there any, outside of the revenue ops team, are there any other operations, dedicated resources in the business or that's just all coming to just you? Just me, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then how many, is, is there anyone else in operations in the whole business or just you? Uh, just myself. So we've got, we have 42 employees and then yeah. there's, there's one of them just started doing a sales enablement role and he's not necessarily operations, but he's really tech savvy. Mm -hmm. Um, and he's been able to help take a little bit of projects on my plate, but since we're still small, it's, it's me owning everything. <laughs> <laughs> and how many people in the sales and CS teams? So we, we have seven AEs. Uh, we have five SDRs, three customer success reps, and then two account managers. Got it. Awesome. Cool. Okay. So yeah, <laughs> you're basically running the operations or the core operations of the business. I, I can imagine you're being pulled in various different, different places. Yeah. All the time. <laughs> um, current tech stack that you're running, please. Yeah. Um, so the tech stack that we've got, so fortunately like Nicholas, he's our CEO. He's, he's super uh, into his, his saying would be tools over labor, which is kind of nice. So I, I get the freedom of, of doing a lot of different tools. But as far as like the main core tech stack, uh, we use Salesforce, of course, just for central hub of all, every interaction with our customers. On top of that, we're using HubSpot for marketing automation. Just recently rolled that out back in December. Um, we've been using SalesLoft for a few years, just for SDR, AE, um, CS team, just all the orchestration for outreach. Uh, we use Clearbit for data enrichment. We use DataFox to source and tier out accounts. Um, and it also, it's, it's, there's another events product that we recently released that's really helpful because we can go and scrape lists from there really well and just get different intent signals for why we might want to engage with them. Um, the reps also use Lead IQ and Sales Navigator just for contact list sourcing. So they know they're pulling people from the company that actually work there. Um, and then we use Panadoc for contract management. So once somebody wants to sign on and come on as a customer. And then uh, on the back end, other, other systems I use is SaaS Optics just for subscription management and uh, revenue recognition. Got it. Um, okay, cool. Now I want to focus on just the sales team. So seven AEs, five SDRs and two account managers. What have you done in your tenure in operations? What's been like the most successful initiative in terms of productivity and then what's the, the thing you've done that released the most time from admin or whatever they were doing to, so they can spend more time selling yeah so if i were to think of like the most productive thing that i've that i've done for the sales team um so when i came on early to chili piper we, did, we didn't have a bunch of tools and we, we so for example we'd be sourcing uh leads and accounts and the leads might not necessarily be working at the account anymore. <laughs> so a lot of wasted effort doing that. Um, 
So one thing I found really well that works that the reps really like doing is, is using Lead IQ and Sales Navigator. So making sure that they actually they're, they're sourcing from Sales Navigator, so they know that the people work there is based on the personas that we're trying to get into. Um, I think that was super effective because we definitely saw a huge uplift in the amount of ops we were able to source through that, and like the reps really like that because they can go and pull people into different Lead IQ campaigns and then immediately tag it right over to sales loft into the, the different cadence um, that they want to push them into. So it cuts out a lot of steps. Um, another cool thing that I just personally like is that so since our inbound product does a lot of really, really cool things where if they book a meeting, um, I have a process in place that's it's a combination of like some different process builders and flows and workflows uh, where once if they're qualified and they book a meeting, um, it'll create the event inside of Salesforce and then convert and then auto create the opportunity with uh, like the primary contact, uh, contact role, um, and just tagging in the different campaign source. So that from an operational standpoint, I think has been super handy. And then from the SDR workflow, I think that's been a really effective way for helping them out. Yeah, I mean, if if your CEO says he likes tools over labor, he must have been very happy with that, right? Because you're just eradicating <laughs> a, a labor step. Um, yeah. From a this is more of a marketing question. Obviously, like the the better you use your own tool, that's like really great marketing material to push out for, like in terms of Chili Piper marketing. So, do you are you ever like creating content for the brand, showing how good the tool can be if you use it right, or is that the marketing team? Yeah, so um, so we we hadn't had like a huge marketing team or really like a lot of headcount of marketing until around this past Dreamforce. Uh, so it's previously for marketing it had been like a good combination of like me and Michael Tuso, who's our director of revenue performance, and Nicholas doing different podcast interviews. But using the tool from a marketing perspective, um, I'd say the way like that that we've gone about it is we've done just a few like things like had specifically like let's say around like paid ads. Um, or if, of course, if you're on like people's websites and then just like different gifts that can, you, we can potentially like show on the website that shows specifically how the product works. Um, but I'd say like in terms of specific marketing around the tool, I think that's something we're going to be building out a lot more coming up because we just hired on a director of content marketing. Um, we have done like outsourced content writers that will write out different blog articles and stuff for us. Um, that's, I'd say the, the way we're primarily like so far have done like marketing around the tool. Got it. Um, now judging from our discussion, you're probably involved in the sales forecasting process. Um, how's that currently yeah. working? <laughs> yeah. Um, so that's definitely been a work in progress with the sales forecasting component of it. So I, I think the way, I like to break it down from what, what we have in place today is so one um, on a, on a weekly basis. So Michael too. So he will do weekly one-on-ones with the AE team um, just a review of their pipeline in terms of what's forecasting to close in relation to the stage that they have set. Um, and on, on top of that, one thing that I, I found pretty cool from a HubSpot blog I was reading um, is there's, there's a field that they use called like closing confidence percent and it's on a scale like one to five. So it has the reps essentially criticize their pipeline in relation to the stage. So sort of like one being, okay, there's no way this is going to close this month or five. Like I'd bet my, my whole career on this. (laughs) So that's sort of a good way of bringing self-awareness to them um, on top of the one-on-ones that Michael does with them. Um, And then of course, looking back at historical close rates, like where we're trending from inbound and outbound as well as a team. Um, and then we also, we do roll up like, okay, where are the SDRs in terms of how many outbound meetings that they're sourcing? Because the SDRs are entirely um, outbound focused. All, all the inbound goes into our AE team. So we want to see, okay, where are they trending in terms of month to date for the meetings they're going to be set and where are they going to be converting potentially like of those, how many potentially might close this month? Um, and then looking at the other ones, how long the sales cycle typically is for inbound and outbound. So outbound is, of course, a little bit longer than our inbound sales cycle. Um, and then also with forecasting, we do centralize that inside of Salesforce. So we don't use anything super fancy with it. It's just a little roll up uh, among the sales team. 
going all the way up to the CEO being Nicholas. Got it. So you're taking all of this, pushing it into one dashboard and Salesforce mm -hmm. um, that can that goes all the way up to CEO. Awesome. And then, do you have do you meet do you meet with the CEO in order to review that with the director of revenue? Yeah. So usually with the CEO, so we do like a weekly meeting um, each Friday. So we'll we'll review that in in addition to different funnel metrics we're looking at, which is it's usually a combination of. It's specifically focused on new business in this case, just for, for new logos, but it's, we'll do a review of uh, forecasting and then also a review of different marketing pipeline metrics we're looking at. Got it. And on the topic of metrics, if you could only measure a single sales related metric for the rest of your career, which would it be? <laughs> um, that's a good question. So I think the way the way I would probably approach it is so just looking at I, I was I'd probably have to say like win rate because that tells you a lot about about a company because so one if, if you're looking at certain reps and they have obviously a significantly higher win rate you're able to replicate a little bit more on what they can do if you go and review their calls like if you're using call recording software um, fortunately we have like a good library of calls that reps can go to um, so additionally like if you look at reps who are a little bit lower on the win rate. Uh, again, that just gives you coaching opportunities for, for where they might be. And like, they might just be disqualifying leads where they really could be qualified. Um, and then also it gives you a good picture into if they're burning through a lot of good deals, which you don't want to just be churning and burning through your whole total adjustable market. <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean, I'd say like definitely a look at the win rate. And also if you look at it from like an SDR perspective, like if they're losing deals, you can go and like look and you, you can go and click close lost reasons and close lost notes on why those deals lose. So the reps can go and have their type of prospecting back when they might want to engage um, with those prospects. So I think it's helpful from multiple different ends. Got it. So I'm sensing that that's your favorite because it's so actionable. E.g., you can look at those who are doing good and then try and duplicate their skills to other people, but then you can also use actionable in terms of coaching for those that can improve. Yeah, definitely. Got it. Um, and then final question, who has been the most useful or the biggest inspiration in your operations focused career? Um, so I'd say probably the person who's been the most useful for me is I'd say Brad Smith. So it was, it was kind of funny because I, when I was doing sales over at Chili Piper, um, I did, I did a few sales cycles with him. <laughs> he actually never ended up buying surprisingly, <laughs> but, um, What's his role? Sorry. Uh, at which business? He, so he was initially, so he's, he actually has his own company now called Sonar app. Um, so I'd actually, I had initially met him when he was at gather, it's gather here.com. It's a company in Atlanta. So he was running their revenue operations there. And then he transitioned over to Terminus. Um, so I'd, had collaborated a lot with him and just tried to pick his brain because for me coming in and just having to essentially adopt and figure out sales ops and just really just get my hands dirty and understand what works. I was trying to at least find somebody to help direct me a little bit <laughs> with some knowledge. Um, so he, he's definitely been like the most resourceful person. And even he, he recently, like I'd say about, I think it was probably about four or five months ago, he created a Slack group called wizard of ops uh, which we just we crowdsource a bunch of different sales ops knowledge. It's all sales ops, marketing ops, uh, CS ops people. Cool. I will link to that in the notes. And so, so with Brad at Chili Piper, then is that how you learned from him, or you just tried to sell to him and then asked him for advice? <laughs> so I tried to sell to them, sell to him, and uh, we ended up becoming buddies. Because I, so I work at so in Atlanta. Um, since our old team's distributed, we work at. I just go to. We'd go to WeWork in. His, his office terminus was like right next door. And when I was getting more into the weeds of really just owning operations, uh, I was like, well, I definitely need some direction. So I, I reached out to him and I was like, hey, would you mind like getting lunch? And <laughs> I was just trying to like pick his brain, understand a whole, like just digging into different processes and getting his perspective because he's had a lot more experience doing it than I had. Um, so that's, that's where I initially like got to know him. I, he wasn't actually working at Chili Pepper. Got it. So you just reached out. So you basically tried to sell to him and then you're like, okay, I can't sell to him. Let's go for lunch. <laughs> and then now he's your friend. 
Exactly. Yeah. It's basically it. Uh, also, okay. So here's what I like to have a page of notes. Um, I like that the thing within HubSpot on the clothing confidence. Um, so you get the reps just like well, one to five, how, like how do they think it's going to close or how confident are they? Um, I think I really like, and this isn't really a, a point about the content, uh, like your, your openness and approach to doing so many different things in Chili Piper must be so valuable for the founder slash CEO and like the leadership team, which is they'll just be like, yep, yeah, Scott will do that. <laughs> they'll email you and then Scott does that. So I think that like, I, I assume they're very grateful for you being around. Um, and then finally, yeah, the, the action ability of the metric you chose, Rin Rate, I thought was really, really good and should be really valuable for anyone listening. Um, so Scott, thank you so much for coming on. Yeah, enjoyed it. Thanks.